All right. Previous lecture, now we learn, now we not we learn, we remembered the formatting of an IPv4. If you already, I'm sure you already knew, but hey, quick jogging of your memory. Now let's take a look at those classes of addresses, right? Which people still doubt there's no classes. We're still using IPv4, ladies and gentlemen, still using it. Even if you're using IPv6 in a dual stack situation, guess what? IPv4 stacked with IPv6. So there is classes of addresses. Do not get confused with class full routing and classless routing when I'm talking about a class of address because it does exist, okay? Anybody tells you any different, you tell them to shoot me an email. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll discuss it with them personally. All right. Now, the class of address. All right. We know that there's A, B, C, D, and E. Okay? And that uh, each class has its range, right? The range for an A is 1 through 126. And I'm going to write them out first and then we'll discuss it. Then we have uh, 128 to 191, and that is an 8. Then we have 192 to 223, 224 to 239, and then 240 to 255. Okay, let's talk about these ranges first. All right, and we'll switch our colors here. We'll use red. Red. Okay. Now, as you can see in the class A, we don't use a zero. Some books, some literature out there, says that the range is zero to 127. But you got to take away the zero and you got to take away the 127 because they're reserved addresses, so therefore the range is 1 through 126. So why even bother saying that? The range for class A, when we're talking about because we're classifying an address, okay? All right, so now right, here's our, your four octets. The octet that we're interested in is the first octet. So if you see a number that falls, whatever number falls in there, you're going to say, hey, this is the class A, this is the class B, this is the class C, okay? That's how you classify an address. You're looking at the first octet at the first octet, okay? All right. Now, the zero is not there because the zero is a reserved address. And normally we'll see this when we do something like a default route, universal gateway, all right? The zero is reserved. It is not part of the range. You cannot use it. Therefore, that's where we start with one. The next address that you see that's not there because we go from a 126 to a 128. Well, what happened to 127? Well, that is your loopback. Now, we know for testing purposes, 120, well, that doesn't look like a 127. Let's see, erase that portion right there. Well, let's just erase the whole thing right there so I can make a nice seven. Okay. 127. Dot zero, dot zero, dot one, right? That is your loop back address. It is reserved for what? To test your TCP IP services. Very good. Okay, that's what you're doing. When you ping this address or ping the word loop back, because that's what this is loop back. Right? You're testing the stack, the protocol stack, to see if it's working. But now, remember, in IP version 4, the whole 127 address or range from 127.001 to 127, 255, 255, 254, you can ping any one of those addresses. You're going to get the same thing back because it's reserved just for loopback. But on a test, on a test at school, or your certification, this is your loopback address. Okay? 127.001. Don't go telling your teacher now that last said, hey, I can ping any address. Hey, so they're all loopbacks. That should be the correct answer. No. When you go take your test, that's the only correct answer. 
when you go out there and you do it and you ping 127, 15, 38, it's going to come back with the same response because that whole uh, I, uh, range 127 is taken up. That's why you see it skipping down right there. Let me talk about one other in particular that I'm sure you all know about is the 169.254. And then I'm going to put question marks here because it can be whatever number in the last, in the third, and the fourth octet. What is this address? If you were to see that address in your, if, you know, you go to command prompt, you type in IP config all, and you see 169.254. What is it that you're going to see? Oh, I'm not getting an IP address. Or you didn't set it, okay, statically, and you're DHCP enabled, but you don't have a DHCP server, so you're not receiving an IP address. So the protocol stack assigned itself a 169.254. And of course, that's called the AUPIPA. The AUPIPA, right? Automatic private IP address, right? It assigned itself that. And you can manipulate that. You can manipulate that. If you do enable for, you know, have it to, to get an IP address from a DHCP server, there's a little extra tab that can go in there and you can actually put static IP addresses that you would like if the DHCP server won't assign you one. All right, so again, these are one of the three most common ones. There are a lot more reserved out there. We're not gonna get into that. But so you can see in this range, at least in the B range, that 169, because this would be a B address, it's not used uh, because it is reserved. Now, I'm not gonna retract that statement, but I am gonna elaborate one more thing on that. I got to work with, at one point, Orinoco wireless routers. And their default IP address, I don't remember the last two octets, but I stuck to my memory that, hey, they're using the APIPA, <coughs> ooh, excuse me, I'm going through puberty. The APIPA 169.254 was their default, whatever, whatever it was, I don't remember the whole thing. But they're using APIPA, and it kind of makes sense. At first it was like, why are they using that? Well, you don't have to change your IP addressing if you just have a computer off somewhere. You get in a PIPA anyway, so it will be able to connect to the router. All right, but Orinoco routers, at least the ones that I worked with several years ago, were using the PIPA as their default IP address for you to access the router. So just throw, I throw that in there, a little tidbit, okay? Another address, even though we're using it for the PIPA, Orinoco is using it for their address to go inside the router. All right, so let's get rid of this right here. No, nope, round one. Okay, all right. So now we have the B range, 128 through 191. C, 192, 223. You can see they're pretty consecutive. Once we get to the D, the D is a specific class of IP address. Here we deal with multicast. We all know, we use the same example everywhere we go video conferencing, okay? Sending a packet to a group of individuals within that range of IP address, okay? And again, we do use multicast addresses within the new routing protocols to send out updates as well, okay? Within that particular range, all right? So the class D address is really reserved for those purposes. And the last one, in pretty much every literature it says experimental, I'm gonna call it Maybe I can get a, a trend going. Black Ops. Okay, because I've never seen anything else on it. If anybody knows about anything else, please send me the information and I'll disseminate it to everybody. But in every literature, it's just experimental. You can't use it. You try to put it inside your TCP IP properties, it'll kick you out. All right? So these are your classes of IP addresses, and this is the range. But we're not done there because each range has a default subnet mask, a default subnet mask. Now, it doesn't pertain because these last two, since they're specific addresses, do not have, oh, okay, default subnet mask. You know, see, it didn't do it there, but it did it to that one. Okay, no problem. No problem. We'll just write it again, okay? All right, so this was class. Why would I do that? A, B, and C. So the default, default 
mask. Here we have a, for the A, 255, five, 0, 0, 0. For the B, 255, five, dot 255, five, dot 0, dot 0. And for the C, 255, five, 255, five, 255. That's zero. Okay, and what does that mean? What does that mean? Okay, let's get our red here. We have our octets. First octet, second octet, third octet, fourth octet. Okay? If we have the 255-000, that's the default for a class A, that means that there's any, let's draw a different line, let's do a, a little different color. Uh, let's use green. All right, for class A, that means there's an imaginary line right here. That means that this is the network. Okay, and these are the host. For class A, that means this octet, 255, is masking that octet, saying, hey, you can't touch it, it's completely full, Leave it alone. You can only work with the last three. That's what that mask is saying. All right. So let's see. Oh, I'm not going to take the chance again. Okay. Now for the next one. I'll put my dot back in. It's a lot simpler to do that than the whole thing. Okay. So that will be a class A. Well, what if you have a class B? If you have a class B, it's 255, 255. That means, oops, that means that your imaginary line now is right there. So now that means that these two octets here are your networks and the rest of it is your host. Okay, so now the first two octets are completely taken up. They're being masked by the subnet map. And then you can work with the last two octets, okay? And then now that you see how that's going, I'm sure you get the idea on how it's going to work for the last one of 255, 255. It's in between the third and the fourth octet. Okay, what happened there? All right, so we'll draw the last line which is 255, 255, 255, 2550, which is three 255s, and there's your line. Therefore, this side is the network, this side is the host. All right? That's what that default mask uh, that we use. Now, then this is one of the problems when it came with IPv4, all right? Because when we were handing out public, public addresses, we will give them default mask. So if you need it because this, the class A address, now that you understand this or you've seen this, and I'm sure you've understand it from previous uh, lessons, okay? When you uh, actually, let's say use, a little black, when you actually use a default mask for a class A, a class A address, can hold, I'm not going to write the specific number, 16 million plus addresses. It's really 16,777,214, but just 16 million addresses. All right. For a class B, you have 65,000 plus, and then for uh, a class C, you have 254, it's a small number. So 254 addresses. So if I came to you, and let's say I have a thousand, I need a thousand IP addresses for a public presence, they say, well, you need a class B, they'll give me the default mask. So there's 64,000 plus addresses that are being wasted. And that was the whole issue with IPv4 and, and just handing out addresses using, and now look at the terminology, using class full subnetting, okay? Class full submitting, meaning there was really no submitting. I'm just going to give you 
just the default mass for the class B, here's a chunk of 64,000 addresses where you only need a 1,000. And that was the problem with that, okay? But now you know the class, the range, the mask, and how many holes pretty much it holds on there, okay? Now, there is something called private addresses, okay? Private addresses. And let's go ahead and get rid of this. All right, and let's get rid of this default mass as well. And let's take a look at the range, okay? And we'll keep it in black. The range for a class A is the entire 10, 10.0.0.1 10 through 10.255 five five dot two oops five four okay so basically any address that you see that starts with a 10 that all these right here that I'm about to write are private Pri okay doesn't want <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm working faster than the actual board that's pretty cool okay so these are private IP addresses let's let's write it down here Private, let me slow it down so I can keep up. Private, okay? And remember, what does it mean to be private, to have a private IP address? That it's not routable on the public internet. That's not routable outside your local area network, okay? So it's only internal. Now, a class B address is 172.16.0.0.1. And I'm doing the actual range. All right, to 172.31.255.254. Okay, and remember, if you saw the IPv4 uh, uh, course that I put out there, the mass for that, that's not the default for class B. I'm not going to get into it here. All right, so take a look at it. It's not the 16, it's a 12, and you can look at RFC uh, 1518, RFC 1518, I believe it is, for the private range for a class B. But there's your range, because you see that it changes right here. So a summoning mask had to determine those numbers. And then the last one is 192.168.0.0.1. through 192.168. Dot 168.255.255. Dot dot I mean, 24, sorry. 24. All right. So if you see something with that, it's 192168, that's a private IP address. If it's 167, it's public. If it's 169, it's public. But if it's 168, it's private. Of course, it has to be 192 as well. Okay? So these are the ranges of your private IP addresses. Uh, your private IP address range they use internally within your network as well as they you cannot go out on the public internet okay with that and you need to know now if they ask you for the mask you're going to give a SATA 8, SATA 16, a SATA 24 like you would for any normal other uh, class A, B or C but if you want to dive deep into on how they got these numbers the mask does change so I urge you to go ahead and take a look at that all right, so there you go. Classes of IP addresses, uh, their ranges, complete ranges, private ranges, all right? Now you know with their mask and how many hosts they will hold, all right? So we're done with this lecture. Again, we're moving right along, brief. Remember, we should know IPv4 by now. If not, you need to get that other course, IPv4 course. I'll see you in the next lecture.